So this morning, 4 a.m., 3.45, whatever it was, right, those storms came through, thunderstorms, okay? My bed was right by a window, and the lightning, you know, lit up the room and, of course, woke me up, and I just couldn't get back to sleep. It was a beautiful show, right? But I was having a hard time. I was trying to get back to sleep, and, and I did what we all do at that point. You know, I kind of whipped out my phone, like, what's going on in the world at 4 a.m., right? Well, I'm a New York Giants fan. That's the apology to my Buffalo friend. <laughs> the New York Giants fan, I got the New York Giants app on my phone. Well, the New York Giants had uploaded uh, an oral history of the final quarter against the Patriots when we beat them in the Super Bowl and destroyed their 18-0 and season, made it 18-1, and right? And, and David Tyree caught that ball on the top of his helmet, right? Ridiculous. And, and, and so it was this oral history describing the entire quarter and how it happened and how there were actually several plays in that drive that could have just ended it and, and, and won the game for the Patriots. There were several opportunities. And even that play where he caught the ball on his helmet should never have happened because Eli Manning was halfway sacked. You know, he's being pulled backwards and the three dudes hanging on him and somehow he got away and threw the ball almost blindly down the field and the guy catches it on his helmet, right? Ridiculous, right? And I'm sitting there as I'm reading through this, I'm kind of laughing to myself and I'm thinking, what a, what a thing to be reading on Easter Sunday morning. Here I'm reading about the New York Giants in a Super Bowl, what, 10 years ago? I don't even know. I'm like, this is so stupid. How, how bad am I as a priest? on Easter Sunday morning, right? And then I got thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? Easter Sunday is about the resurrection. Easter Sunday is about Christ who was dead in the tomb, right? I just learned this this year. This is kind of cool. Did you know in the Roman law, okay, that they didn't have good medicine back then, right? In Roman law, you had to be dead three days before they declared you dead. Thus, three days in the tomb, Mm -hmm. right? So that it was official, he was recognized as deceased, okay? So here he is dead, and he comes back to life, right? Sorry, Lord. In a very mundane way, right? The Giants were dead, and they came back to life. How many times in that one court, right? It was astounding. It's amazing, right? Well, maybe this isn't such a bad thing to be reading on Easter Sunday morning, right? But it's more than that. It's more than that. We come to celebrate Christ rising from the dead. We come to celebrate the resurrection because he defeated death, because he defeated sin, and he ushered in grace and new life, right? But it's it's also about our resurrection then. Because he promised us. And that was his oath. His oath was, you know, was testified there on the cross by him dying and shedding his blood he's saying i oath right we used to make uh blood oaths right you cut your hand somebody else would cut their hand and shake hands right and the mixing of the blood was kind of the oath right christ made a blood oath on the cross to say i die for you and i die with you so that when i rise you will rise with me right that's what he's doing that's what he's saying. And it's about our future resurrection. Okay? We just read in St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, though, he said something very interesting. He said to the people there that he was ministering to, he said, you've died. He said, you've already died. My first funeral as a minister, kind of kind of a unique situation. My first funeral as a minister, the only Catholics in the room, for me and the deceased. Everybody else was Southern Baptist. It was great. I knew I had to bring my A game preaching that day, right? And so I got in there and I said, you know, the, the guy's name was Pete. And I said, you know, the news said that Pete died Wednesday. He didn't die Wednesday. Pete died a long time ago. Pete died as a baby. You know, looking at me like, what are you talking about? And I said, Pete was baptized. He was baptized as a child. That's the day we die. Right? You go down into the water like Christ went down into the tomb. You come up out of the water like Christ came up out of the tomb. And you leave behind your sinful self. That's the 
idea of baptism. That's the purpose of baptism. So from the minute we come out of that baptismal font, our life is over. St. Paul put it this way. To me, life is Christ. Right? So now our life is lived for Christ. That's it. That's it. That's, that's what we do. Right? As a Catholic priest, I dress in black. Why? Because I'm dead. My opinions don't matter anymore. Right? My needs don't matter anymore. You know, my wants don't matter anymore. I live for Christ completely and totally, and that's it. Right? That's the goal. Now, do I do that perfectly? No. I try. Right? But that black, every time I put it on, it reminds me that that's my goal. My goal is to lay out my life completely in the service of God and his people. Because I'm dead. My life's already over. Doesn't matter. Right? We talked about the New York Giants. They've had three terrible seasons. Doesn't matter anymore. Right? Doesn't matter anymore. I don't even care. I still like to look at them and then read the glory days, but it doesn't matter to me anymore because my life is in Christ. That's it. Right? And so Paul tells us we're already dead. It's already over. Right? And here's the cool thing about resurrection. It's not just something that happens in the future. It's not just something that happens when they finally put us six feet on. It's something that is ongoing because every day, that we lay down our lives every day that we sacrifice ourselves in the service of others, be it our country, be it our families, be it our friends and loved ones, right? We rise again. There's there's a resurrection that occurs with that. There's a renewal. There's a regeneration of life. There's an enhancement of life that takes place in that moment. And you can see it, maybe if you can't see it in your own life, you can see it in the life of the church. You can see it in the life of Christianity, right? How many times over the years has some political entity or other tried to crush out Christianity? Happens all the time, right? Happened in, in the early church, right? There were 10 persecutions of the Roman emperors trying to crush the church in the early years. Nobody could do it. That was the, the greatest military and political entity in the world, and they couldn't crush Christianity, right? Right? The Soviets tried to do it. I mean, it's happened time and time again. Napoleon tried to do it, right? Robespierre tried, Voltaire tried to do it. Didn't happen, right? Couldn't make it happen because every time it looks like Christianity is on the ropes and dying, like Eli Manning and you know David Tyree and all that, every time it looks like they're on the ropes and dying, we come back, right? It's like, you know, it's like you, you almost wait. Like the minute somebody says they're going to tear down and destroy Christianity, you're like, ah, wait for this one. I want to see what they try, you know, because, you know, it's just going to backfire. And, you know, Christ is just going to raise his people again. Right. So you can see it as the family. Now start looking at it in your own life. Right. Or maybe you're in the midst of a period right now where you feel like you're dying. Right. I know there's a lot of belly aching going on in my dorm right now being locked down in this place, right? But if you watch, there'll be a resurrection. I know back home, everybody's dealing with the frustrations of the restrictions and limitations of life right now, right? But we're already seeing resurrections. We're seeing families spending time together and getting to know each other again. We're spending, we're seeing people, I'm, I'm watching people post artwork and I'm like, dude, I didn't even know you were an artist, you know? People are creating songs. People are, you know, doing amazing things. People are writing poetry. They're looking out their window at nature and going out and sitting in their backyard. And you're like, oh, my gosh, it's amazing, right? Yeah, there's some tough things going on as well. And we respect that. We pray for that. We pray for those people to get through those times and be delivered. We pray for a resurrection directly into their lives. But we look at the things that are already occurring and we we look at life in general and we say, you know, God's promise for our future was written in our past with Christ and his, his down payments are being made, right? The, the, the monthly mortgage is being made throughout our lives and we're seeing it happen if we have the eyes to view it, if we have the heart to view it, right? So this Easter season, and it is a season. Easter goes from today through 
Pentecost, right? The, 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 when we have we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming down upon the apostles at Pentecost. It's 50 days from now. So 50, we just spent 50 or 49 days if, if, if you're Catholic. If you're not Catholic, you might know what Lent is. Lent is a period of, they say 40 days. It's really about 49 days of preparing for Easter. When we go through penance, when we do reflect upon our sin, when we do reflect about how we could live our life better in Christ, right? And then Easter hits and we spend the same number of days celebrating and rejoicing, right? So take this Easter season. Don't forget it. Keep coming back to the fonts. Keep coming back to check in and listen and, and, and hear uh, God speaking to you and watch him work with you. So that each of those resurrections starts to spark within you that hope, that desire, that anticipation of our own resurrection and the resurrection of our loved ones who've gone before us. Right? It's a beautiful thing. And, and, and I'll speak from a Catholic perspective for a minute here, right? When we come into prayer, we don't just come into prayer with the people around us. We believe that if somebody has died in Christ, they're alive in Christ. They're still living in Christ. And so when I come together with Christ, I don't just come together with Christ. I come together with all of them as well. Right? And that, that, that's that hope. That's that expectation on, on, on God's promises. So use this time, use this time to really allow the mystery and the glory of that resurrection to come to bear in your lives as you live your lives. We're all oath into the army. We all took an oath to lay down our lives for our country and our fellow man, right? But you really took that oath at the baptismal point. You really took that oath when you became a Christian and said, this is what I do. Christ did this for me. I'm going to go do this for others because I'm betting on his promises coming to fulfill. Amen? Amen. Let us do all for the greater honor and glory of God.